Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a Facebook cover image in Word. So it's really important that you get the right dimensions for the cover photo, otherwise it's not going to look great. So in order that it's displayed correctly on both mobile and desktop, I'm going to go for the dimension 820 pixels by 360 pixels. Now, on this particular program, we can't actually use the pixel element, so I've converted them into centimetres. So we're firstly going to change our page round to landscape. The way to do that is to go up to the layout tab, go to the orientation tab, click on the drop down and select landscape. I'm just going to increase the size of my page. And then I'm going to insert my image. Now, if you don't want an image, I suggest that you insert a shape. So go up to Insert, Shape, go to the rectangle, click and drag. Now this can act as a guide for you. So let's just get rid of this blue, make sure it's highlighted, go to Shape Format, click on Shape Fill and click No Fill, go up to the outline and select Black. Now we can use this as a guide because we can put our dimensions in by going over to this section here. Make sure this shape is still highlighted and go up to height, make sure this isn't checked and put the height in. So the Facebook cover photo height should be 9.525 centimeters and the width is 21 point six nine five per center. So this is your guide for your Facebook cover image and that's if you're not using an image that's going to cover the entire space but we will use it for a guide for our image first of all. So check off that, insert, picture, picture from file, click insert, now, in order to move this picture, we're going to have to sort out the wrapping. So click on the picture, go up to picture format, wrap text, go down to in front of text. Now you can see if I put this text over the top of this guide, and just grab the corner, it's not going to fit properly. So we will have to crop it, but we can crop it to our advantage using the crop tool. So the first thing to do is to ensure we've got the right width first. So click on the image, make sure you're on the picture format, go over to the width, uncheck this box and let's put 21.695 and press enter. Now that's the exact width of our Facebook image. Now we need to reduce the height the best way to do that is to go up to the crop tool, click on the crop tool and then you can see these black markers around the outside. Make sure that your image is at the top of that guide that we put in. Click on this bottom one and as you begin to drag you can see our guide appears because the bottom of it goes slightly transparent. Then just move your cursor, it will click onto that guide and release. And you can see up here, it's not 5.2, but it's 5.3, but that won't matter. It's a tiny fraction. Once you're happy, you can now move this image up and down to suit your needs. Once you're happy with where it is, just press enter. And your image is now the perfect size for Facebook. Now because my image stretches the whole of this guide, I'm going to get rid of it. But if you want to put text to the side or other images here, then you can keep this and use it as a guide. So I'm going to click on my background and just press delete. The next thing I want to do is just slightly reduce the transparency of this image. And in order to do that, I need to click on it, go to picture format, go along to this icon here that says transparency, click on the drop down and then you can select from a number of different options. So I'm just going to select this one which just slightly reduces that transparency. The next thing I'm going to do is select my text. 
So insert, text box, draw text box, click and drag. I'm going to insert my text and then I'm going to highlight it, go to the Home tab, increase the size, change the font, increase the size a bit more, then I'm going to reduce the size of my text box, then I'm going to get rid of the white background and as you can see there's a slight black border around the edge so I'm going to go up to Shape Format, go to the Outline tab, No Outline, Shape Fill, No Fill. And then there's my text box. I'm just going to make sure that this text is in the centre of my text box. So double click, go to the Home tab and click Centre. So now my text is perfectly in the centre of my text box. So I've now formatted this entire text box and to reduce my workload, instead of right, trying to recreate it each time, I'm just going to copy and paste it. So Command or Control C, Command or Control V, and then one more time, Command or Control V for some text down here. Now for this text, double click, enter your text, extend the box, And then again, double click, it's all centered, perfect. Now because we can't see this text brilliantly because the background's quite busy, I'm just going to put a box behind it so that you can see it a little better. So I'm gonna go up to insert, shape, rectangle, click and drag. And I want the background to be very similar to these grays included here. So I'm going to go up to shape format, shape fill and go down to more fill colors click on it and then we've got this brilliant little tool here which is the eyedropper tool click on that and then you can click anywhere in the image to select your color once you're happy click ok then when i move this over the top of my text you can see that it covers it which obviously we don't want so make sure it's highlighted and go up to send backwards. Once you've done that, you'll see the first text box appears. You have to click it again to allow the second text box to appear. So now we're just going to try and line all these up. So hold the command or control key down and click on the box, the amber text and the architect's text. You can see they've all been highlighted. Then go up to the align tool and click align to center. And you see all these boxes now line up. And then you can click off. Now I'm gonna group these two together. So I'm going to click architects, hold the command or control key down and click amber. And then I'm going to go up to group, click on the drop down and select group. So now these two will move together. Then I'm going to hold the command or control key down and click the shape around the edge and then we're going to align them again. But we're going to align them to the middle and the side. So go up to align, align to centre, align, align to middle. And now they're perfectly lined up. And as you can see, I've just forgotten to take out this blue border of this shape. So click on the shape, go to shape format, Click on the outline and select no outline. Click back off and you can see it's gone. So I would like this background to be a little bit transparent. So I'm going to click on it. And then I'm either going to go up to this format pane icon here or double click on my shape. And then what you'll find that will appear is this menu here. Go down to fill. And you can see there's a transparency slider. You can use the up or down arrows if you want. I'm just going to move this transparency slider to the right. And as you can see, it becomes a little more transparent. And I'm just going to get it to the point where you can clearly see the text 
and the background is just visible. Now once I'm happy, before I click off the shape, I'm going to copy and paste it. So I'm going to use it down here. Now you can see it's over the top of this text, so I'm going to send it backwards. So again, without clicking off, go up and click send backwards. And there the text appears at the front. Now before I go ahead and carry on with this, I'm going to go back up, click on my background, hold my command or control key down, click on my text, go up to group and group the whole lot. Now this all moves around as one section. And then I'm going to go ahead and center it with my image. So select it, hold the command or control key down, click on the image, you can see they're just misaligned in the centre here. Go up to align, align to centre. And now they're perfectly aligned. Now, obviously, if you want to move this up or down, you can do so. If you want to go in and re-edit any of this, you can. All you have to do is ungroup it, which is the reverse. So click on the group, go to group, and just select ungroup. Now down to this section here, I'm just going to increase the size of this box and reduce the height and then move this across double click highlight the text I'm going to go to the home tab and reduce the size and then insert some text then I need to just increase this text box so my text is too big, double click inside, command or control A to highlight all of the text. Go back up and I'm going to use this decrease font size tool. I'm going to reduce the size of my text box. And I'm going to align them with this shape as well. So again, highlight the text, command or control key held down, highlight the background, go to shape format, Align, align to centre, align, align to middle, and then just group it. Perfect. And then again, you can move this round any way you like. Now again, if you're not happy with anything, you can go back in and group it and just change it. I'm going to do something now that you might find a little bit controversial, but I will prove to you this is the right way to do it. I am going to take a screenshot. Now, a lot of people might think this is cheating, but I'll show you the reason in a second. Firstly, I am going to increase the size of my page as big as I possibly can, because when your computer takes a screenshot, it will be taking pictures of pixels. And the more pixels that you can give it, the better quality your image. Now, I just made a classic error there, so I haven't grouped the whole thing, but it doesn't matter. Now, this is the biggest I can possibly make my image, I think. No, we can go a bit bigger. Okay. So now, on my Mac, it's Command or Control with the Shift key, number four. And that may not be the same for your computer, but obviously you'll know how your computer takes a screenshot. Now, for a Mac, you can click and drag. Now, if you can't click and drag your specific area, just take a screenshot and then reinsert it into Word and I'll show you how you can make sure it's the right size. So if you just zoom out. So if I insert my screenshot, insert picture, picture from file, I'm just going to sort out the wrapping, right click, wrap text in front of text. So this is my screenshot. Now, if your screenshots come out where you've got lots of your screen around it and the image is in the middle, then you need to crop it. I would not advise that you crop it in Word because it will crop the image and you'll have to resave it as an image and it will be a reduced quality. So I recommend that you go ahead and try to crop it in a, an image program that you'll have as default on your computer. Now, if you can see here, the image quality is pretty similar. 
So this is my screenshot here. So I'm going to move that down. So I did this in a slightly different way before where you can save the whole lot as an image and people will probably say, well, why didn't you just right click and save as an image? So if I right click on my image here and save as a picture, I can do that. But if I group the whole lot get together, including my text, if I right click on this text box, you can see I can't save this as an image, as a picture. I have to convert this to a picture by copying and pasting it as a picture. When you convert it all to a picture, the quality is heavily reduced. So let me just insert picture from file. And this is one I did earlier that I saved as a picture from Word. Let me just sort the wrapping out. So if I put that over the top, you can now see that the quality of this saved as a picture from Word versus this screenshot is quite blurry and not something I'd want to put on my Facebook page. So that's why I've said that taking a screenshot, I believe, is much better and produces much better results than trying to save as a picture from Word. So I hope that's helped you. I hope it's now a little bit clearer why I did the screenshot and not saved it as a picture. If you do have any problems or comments, please don't hesitate to let me know. I hope it's helped. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.